Lots of signs down here um, proclaiming Jackson's position on a couple of controversial issues. Palestinian statehood, for example. And then there are the signs, Thank Farmers you. for Jackson. He identified them early on in the course of this campaign as a special group that he wanted to be identified with, spoken behalf with, spoken behalf of, marched with. And now here is the Reverend Jackson. Tonight, we pause and give praise and honor to God for being good enough to allow us to be at this place at this time. When I look out at this convention, I see the face of America, red, yellow, brown, black, and white. We're all precious in God's sight, the real rainbow coalition. All of us, all of us who are here, I think that we are seated, but we're really standing on someone's shoulders. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Rosa Parks. The mother of the Civil Rights Movement. I want to express my deep love and appreciation for the support my family has given me over these past months. They have endured pain, anxiety, threat, and fear. But they have been strengthened and made secure by our faith in God, in America, and in you. Your love has protected us and made us strong. To my wife, Jackie, the foundation of our family. To our five children whom you met tonight. To my mother, Mrs. Helen Jackson, who is present tonight. And to our grandmother, Mrs. Matilda Burns. To my brother, Chuck, and his family. To my mother-in-law, Mrs. Gertrude Brown, who just last month, at age 61, graduated from Hampton Institute. A marvelous achievement. I offer my appreciation to Mayor Andrew Young, who has provided such gracious hospitality to all of us this week, and a special salute to President Jimmy Carter. President Carter. President Carter restored honor to the White House after Watergate. He gave many of us a special opportunity to grow. For his kind words, for his unwavering commitment to peace in the world, and for the voters that came from his family, every member of his family, led by Billy and Amy, I offer my special thanks to the Carter family. privilege to stand here before you has been won, won in my lifetime by the blood and the sweat of the innocent. But 24 years ago, the late Fannie Lou Hamer and Aaron Henry, who sits here tonight from Mississippi, were locked out onto the streets in Atlantic City, the head of the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party. But tonight, a black and white delegation from Mississippi is headed by Ed Cole, a black man from Mississippi, 24 years later. Many were lost in the struggle for the right to vote. Jimmy Lee Jackson, 
a young student gave his life. Rather Louis so, a white mother from Detroit called nigger lover and brains blown out at point blank range. Surrounded Goodman and Cheney, two Jews and a black, found in a common grave, bodies riddled with bullets in Mississippi. The four darling little girls in the church in Birmingham, Alabama, they died that we might have a right to live. Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., for those who will come after, as a tribute to the endurance, the patience, the courage of our forefathers and mothers, as an assurance that their prayers are being answered, that their work has not been in vain, and the hope is eternal. Tomorrow night, my name will go in nomination for the presidency of the United States of America. We meet tonight at the crossroads, a point of decision. Shall we expand, be inclusive, find unity and power, or suffer division and impotence? We come to Atlanta, the cradle of the old South, the crucible of the new South. Tonight, there is a sense of celebration because we are moved fundamentally move from racial battlegrounds by law to economic common ground, but the moral challenge to move to higher ground, common ground. Think of Jerusalem, the intersection where many trails met, a small village that became the birthplace for three great religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Why was this village so blessed? because it provided a crossroads where different people met. Different cultures, different civilizations could meet and find common ground. When people come together, flowers always flourish. The air is rich with the aroma of a new spring. Take New York, the dynamic metropolis. What makes New York so special? It's the invitation at the Statue of Liberty. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddle masses who yearn to breathe free, not restricted to English only. Many people, many cultures, many languages with one thing in common, the yearn to breathe free, common ground. Tonight in Atlanta, for the first time in this century, we convene in the South, a state where governors once stood in schoolhouse doors, where Julian Bond was denied his seat in the state legislature because of his conscientious objection to the Vietnam War, a city that through its five black universities has graduated more black students than any city in the world. Atlanta, now a modern intersection of the New South, common ground. That's the challenge of our party tonight. Left wing, right wing, progress will not come through boundless liberalism, nor static conservatism, but at the critical mass of mutual survival, not at boundless liberalism, nor static conservatism, but at the critical mass of mutual survival, it takes two wings to fly. Whether you're a hawk or a dove, you're just a bird living in the same environment, in the same world. The Bible teaches that when lions and lambs lie down together, none will be afraid and there will be peace in the valley. It sounds impossible. Lions eat lambs. Lambs sensibly flee from lions. Yet even lions and lambs find common ground. Why? Because neither lion nor lambs want the forest to catch on fire. Neither lions nor lambs want acid rain to fall. Neither lions nor lambs can survive nuclear war. If lions and lambs can find common ground, surely we can as well as civilized people.